I'll start with is some reinforcing of this rear end and modifying it to both be stronger and look cooler. And then in conjunction with that, some places to mount these fenders. very sturdy fender mount going on here. Um, I use diamond plate for no other reason than that we have a bunch of it. And uh, if you're gonna use diamond plate, what better place than on a tractor? This goes like that. Bolts right onto the hub there. Nice thick aluminum, four holes threaded into it. And then the fender bolts onto it. Now that I've figured out that side, I'm gonna build the other side and uh, We'll show all the steps this time. So the mail just came in, which means it's a great time to talk about the sponsor for this video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. I went on their site, chose the styles of things that I'm interested in, and uh, so let's see what they sent me. This box is called the Flip, and it's a sweet little knife that's like, you know, handmade, very high quality. Let's see how sharp it is here. Nice. Damascus steel is super cool because, like, if you look closely at the grain on here, it's been acid etched so like you can see the layers and that's because Damascus steel is actually made by folding together hundreds of layers of steel or taking the same piece and folding it over and over again until there's hundreds of layers thick. And something about that process makes it incredibly strong. So every box also comes with a little, you know, note card about what the product is, a little bit about, uh, you know, tells you about the Damascus steel in it and, you know, how to take care of it and stuff like that and you know, so you know, might learn a, learn a thing or two every month too. They also sent us this, which is the Weekender kit. Uh, it's a really nice little travel bag, which you know, you could also use that as a tool bag. It looks nice and sturdy. So signing up for Bespoke Post is free. There's no commitment. Uh, and every time you order a box, you get at least $70 worth of stuff for $45. So if you click our link in the description and use our promo code GRIND20, you'll get 20% off your first box. Before I bolt it up though, I realized that uh, I want to trim these fingers down a little bit. I think I just want to match this slope here. Because I don't, I think this, this part here sticks down too far for the way it's mounted and looks kind of weird. So I'm just going to figure out what this angle is here and then match it on this side and hack that off.
finally got our uh, driveline end piece, thanks to Jimmy over at Snail Trail 4x4. He uh, is building a four-wheel drive uh, Toyota crawler out of a two-wheel drive Toyota. So he had this piece that we need and sent it on over. So Snail Trail 4x4 does, uh, you know, Toyota off-road stuff, which is cool. So go check that out. Now we have the piece with the splines. If you go in the end of the transmission, that piece goes in there. And then you can see about uh, adapting to this and uh, see what we'll do about U-joints and such. So uh, it turns out that I guesstimated just an exactly enough space here for a double U-joint setup to fit in. So this is the piece out of the jag that bolts onto the diff here. And then this is the piece that goes into the trans. Now I just have to figure out how to make a piece that I can weld to this and to this that'll keep them aligned while I weld them. So I gotta make a piece on the lathe that'll fit snugly over this. Is that from the Jag or the Toyota? So this is the Toyota end, this is the Jag end, and Toyota has very nice clips. You can just grab them with like a regular pair of pliers. I got this apart and I was trying to fit this in the lathe and I'm sure there's a way I could do it and get it straight, but it's very hard to get it in there. Uh, and it's also hard to tell when it's straight. So I had a thought that these U-joints look awfully similar in size between Jag and Toyota, uh, which is surprising. And one of these caps, as far as I can tell, is the same size there. We're out here at the remnants of the Jag, and I'm gonna steal this output flange from the uh, transmission, and that'll mate up to the other end of the drive line that I stole, and uh, make it way easier. Boom. Is it gonna work? I think so. So that bolts right to there now, which is a uh, hybrid Jag Toyota U-joint setup. The U-joint itself, the bearing part is all Toyota. It's just this yoke on the backside that's Jag, which then bolts up to this Jag piece here. So now that piece bolts up to the rear diff. So all I have to do is make these two pieces of driveline, but much shorter. missing link to the drive line. So I just chopped this one off and cleaned it up a little bit and then bored this out to fit very snugly on that. It doesn't even quite fit on all the way. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit, see if it slips on, which is what I want because I want it nice and straight. looking good yeah so that's just uh, 
press fit right there. I heated up the outside and then hammered it on there. And uh, I bet you could drive for, you know, a few seconds, depending on how hard you drove before it'd slip. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna test fit it before I weld it, obviously. And uh, it's a little tricky to get the whole thing in there. I might have to assemble it in place. And this month we are giving away an electric dirt bike. So check that link below. And uh, it fits perfectly. Look at that. The, uh, it's not welded yet, but yeah, that'll work. And it works at, you know, a variety of angles. I'd say that's a win. Just gotta pull it apart and weld it. Now it's time to uh, mount the engine and transmission. So first I'm just gonna get it positioned in all the ways that matter and get it where I want it to be. And then I'll start making some mounts. I'll probably make a cross member that goes under the trans somewhere back here and then has some bolts on it. And then um, possibly use some of these bell housing bolts and make a mount bracket maybe here and on the other side that um, also acts to stiffen the frame because, you know, it's, it's multi-purpose, you know, bolt the engine and trans together. In this case, also the starter, you know, also make it all rigid. This engine method. So I already got this mount here which does both engine and trans at the same time. Now I'm working on some motor mounts that are farther forward um, which will also help stiffen the chassis a lot because right now given how narrow this chassis is and the fact the two sides aren't really connected it's got a lot of room for twist. motor mount in and then I've also got this funky little football shaped piece of metal that 
perfectly plates off that bit. And there's still room for the uh, steering to spin and do its thing right there. So weld that in and then um, this whole front section will be pretty well complete. We're trying to roll this thing outside so we can have a look at it from a distance, but this brake rotor is extremely seized. So uh, I'm hammering this chisel in between, we're gonna put new brake pads and stuff on it obviously when we actually drive it, but. So to get it unseized, I'm just prying the brake pad away from it. And uh, it's pretty entertaining because it just shoots brake fluid out the hose every time. Of progress this week. Got the drive shaft completely done, all the engine mounts done, a um, few other things. So uh, we'll keep moving forward with reinforcing the frame and making more mounts. So again, I'm gonna make another mount for the back of the transmission that'll also be a chassis reinforcement. I'll do some reinforcing of this whole section of the chassis because it's, it's sturdy this way, but it's not sturdy at all in any other direction. Some reinforcements back here. And then uh, pretty soon here, I think we'll start working on steering, which is gonna be pretty basic compared to some of the other stuff we've done, but I still have to make all the linkages and attachments and stuff. And then also a major one is changing this around because um, that's not where you want your shifter to be. <laughs> Moving along, but we still got a long ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> 